Hi, I'm Victoria Knight, singer from Victoria K, and I am here with Metal Rules today to answer some questions. So the first question is, what drives you as an artist to create music? Over the years, um, inspiration has definitely changed and definitely grown. One of the first bands I remember falling in love with that wanted, like, that made me want to create music was Evanescence. <laughs> It's a little bit obvious, but um, I fell in love with Amy Lee's voice, first of all, and like her songwriting and her artistry. I love the way that the symphony kind of like cooperated with the heavier music to create this sonic landscape that I really wanted to create myself. So I remember that being my very, very first massive inspiration. But over the years, I've listened to bands like Nightwish, Camelot, Elvady, which we had the pleasure of supporting in 2019. Um, and bands like Lorna Shaw, Spirit Box, Ice Nine Kills, like it varies, it very much varies. Um, and inspiration from all of those different artists kind of made me want to create a newer type of sound, something a bit different to what heaps of other bands are doing out there. I wanted to like create something new, I guess, and kind of put those two elements together, like the symphonic elements and the really heavy elements and the screaming and to create this like different experience, if that makes sense. There's other um, inspirations as well that don't come from music. So I love literature and poetry. So poets like William Shakespeare, Edgar Allan Poe, um, William Blake, who else? T.S. Eliot, there we go. Um, I love them as well because they create this world and these stories I just think their language is beautiful, so I wanted to kind of incorporate that language with the music to create a different experience. All right, so the next question is, where does the band's name come from? Well, my name is Victoria, <laughs> Victoria Knight. Um, so that's where the Victoria K comes from, but it was a solo project before it was a band, if that makes sense. I was doing music on my own and we formed in 2019 when we needed um, a live show to be created in a way so yeah we formed and we played like a bunch of gigs and we're like you know what let's be a band and let's keep the same name because it kind of just stuck um, tell us about your upcoming album so our upcoming album it's called Corre which is the name of the protagonist in the album Persephone um, it's coming out on the 14th of October, so not too long now. You can actually pre-save it right now with the link in all of our social media bios. But Kore is about the story of Persephone and Hades, the Greek hymn and the Greek myth. Um, that comes directly from my culture because I am Greek and I really wanted to explore that and explore those sounds. But each song of the story tells a different part of the myth and it translates it to modern issues that are happening now. So we touch on things like women's rights, bodily autonomy, um, social structures, philosophical structures, belief systems, things that I've always found really interesting and I've always been passionate about and things that like relate directly back to the tale of Persephone. So the tale is Persephone was kidnapped by Hades and taken down to Hades and it's just the story of how she tries to get out and how her mother tries to find her. It's, it's a really tragic story, but it's a really, really beautiful one that I'm glad we got to explore. Okay, so what inspired the lyrics on this release? Give us a couple of examples. So if I talk about the second song on the album, Mother's Garden, um, that talks about Demeter, who's Persephone's mother, that talks about her grief and the anguish and the pain that someone feels when they lose a child. So I use a play on the words, here in my garden of shadows, I watch the sun as it dies. That relates directly back to Demeter, who's the god of the harvest. She takes care of the gardens and how the earth is dying around her and collapsing around her. There are also some sections in some of the songs where I do speak in ancient Greek. Um, in our one of the tracks, Pomegranate, I've taken lyrics directly from the original hy um, hymn and myth. So, Ergos theon makaron deinen metiseto bulen. That's directly from the section of the story that the song's about. So that's some little cool nuggets in there. And another one would be in 
our upcoming single, Tower. Um, the song One Step After the Last One on This Long Road Paved With Our Blood. So that's about when Demeter orders the people to build a temple in her honour. And that's a play on our society and the working class, how our society is built upon the working class and how that's not recognised. So the next question is, what is the story behind the album cover artwork? So again, this relates directly back to the story itself. In the center, you can see Persephone or Kore. She goes by both names. Um, and she's tied between the two worlds, which is the hell and the overworld. And you can kind of see the direct parallels and the juxtaposition between the two. And that's something that the artist did a really good job of capturing. So both sides are completely symmetrical, except one side is placed in Hades and one side is placed in the overworld. If you can, if you look through the artwork, um, it tells the whole story. So in the top corner, you have the temple, then you have Hades, and then you have the flowers that she was picking. So you really wanted to encapsulate the whole story in the cover art. And the artist did an absolutely incredible job of that. We wanted to capture the darkness of the story as well. So I think that, yeah, we're really happy with how that came out. So if you look through the album cover, as you're listening to the album, you can see the different sections of the story. Are there many new albums that have caught your ears? Ooh, okay, yeah, there are a few. <laughs> um, I've been listening to, it's not an album, it's an EP. I've been listening to Lorna Shore a lot um, and their new EP with their new singer, Will Ramos. It's oh, amazing and I return to nothingness. It's just like a beautiful, like, um, coming together of different sounds. Like you've got the death metal stuff, like the classic stuff, and then you've got the symphonic stuff, which is what I love. So it's really appealed to me. <laughs> and I just love his voice. He's absolutely incredible. Massive, massive fan of them. Another one is Spirit Box's new EP. I'm a massive fan of that too. <laughs> um, my favorite song on that one has to be Hysteria. I think they've taken like a heavier route, which is super cool. So what else? And Lacuna Coil's album, which is not new, Black Anima, it's kind of old now, but I'm still obsessed with it. I'm still going to talk about it. It's one of my favourites out there. All right. So tell us a bit about your local music scene. So I'm from Melbourne, Australia, um, down in Victoria. Ironic, because that's my name. But um, the Melbourne, like, the music scene down here is awesome. Like, we don't just have really good metal acts. We have really good jazz acts. We have really like different cultural acts going around, which I love to explore. Like being in the heart of the city, it's just, there are so many gigs going on all the time and you have to catch all of them. But as for metal, there's a really good prog scene here, a really massive prog and metal core scene, which is like, I love that music, so that's great. <laughs> um, but I've always, yeah, I've always found the music scene to be like, down here really really good but there's also um, a great music scene up in Brisbane where they have a lot of symphonic and more black metal type bands so it kind of varies like depending on where you go in the country but I would say that Melbourne has to be one of my favorite music scenes that I've been a part of all right so what are your future plans for the band well obviously we have the release coming up um, that's one of our massive plans on the 14th of October. We have a, another single coming out very soon, following up our last single, Persephone. Um, and as for shows, we've got some things in the pipelines, but we'll get back to you. So just keep an eye out and keep an ear out and we'll kind of, we'll just see what, where it goes. So tell us, why does metal rule? And if you think it doesn't, then why are you playing in a metal band, LOL? <laughs> I love that question. Um, I do think metal rules, so there we go. I've, I like metal, but I like all music in a way. I like how there's so many different subgenres of metal and how it takes inspiration from all these different styles of music. I've always thought the storytelling in metal is just awesome. Like I might have said it before, but I'm going to say it again. <laughs> I've always loved the way that I don't know, just the music, it kind of captures your soul and it kind of like leaves you with this feeling that I can't even describe. And it does rule, like I love symphonic metal because it has like all the different elements in it. And I can't even imagine doing any other genre of music to be honest, it just, it rocks. 
and everyone that listens to it loves it and I can't even describe why it's got this hold on you which is amazing thank you so much to Metal Rules for having me on this interview it's been an absolute blast I've loved answering every single one of the questions you can catch our new album Corre out on the 14th of October rock on guys <laughs>